Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. We got Joe Evangelisti here with us today. Uh, he's the creator, owner, founder of the Inner Circle family. It's his, his mastermind that he has, as well as uh, an event that he runs called The Roundtable. And I'm excited to have you, Joe, here. So thank you so much for taking time to be here. Absolutely, Nate. I appreciate you having me on, brother. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we were able to make it work. And, and uh, so to get right into it, the first question I love asking is the name of the podcast, Championship Leadership. What comes to mind for you? Like, what do you think of when you hear Championship Leadership? Yeah, man, I, I, love, I love the name of the podcast. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's a cool name. You know, I think, you know, to me, leadership is always about um, setting the example, number one, right? I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's probably a lot of ways that people define it, but yeah. you got to lead by example, number one. It, that, I've always had that, that, uh, that spirit about me since um, I was in the military. Um, but also coaching, right? I think a lot of people lead by managing, and I like to lead by coaching. So, um, constantly giving people examples, checking in with them, seeing what they need, trying to help them grow and get better, and uh, really just being their advocate, right? Being on their side, helping them, uh, helping them succeed. Yeah, well, t uh, talk more. That's 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 interesting, right? Like managing versus coaching. Let's let's. What's the distinction for you? Yeah, you know, I think for years, um, especially in corporate America, you know, managers have always been those people that they think that they have to. Um, uh, treat people like a resource, like you hear the term human resource. Um, I think I think I, I, I first kind of heard this concept um, in uh, I'm trying to think of the book that actually first taught me this concept. But humans are not resources that are meant to be like burned up and chewed up and spit out, right? Humans are are, are you know they are the ultimate resource. They are um, you know they're renewable. They're they're that's where the energy is. And if you if you keep just kind of managing someone like a tool. Like a, like a, like your car, you know, you're only gonna get so many miles out of it before the engine goes bad, right? Whereas if you coach someone and you help them become more successful and you help them create actual legacy and you help them create actual wealth and, and you actually learn what their whys are and why they want to be successful and um, you start to work towards that, um, instead of just assuming that everyone's there to collect a paycheck and go home at five o'clock, um, I think that type of leadership not only creates more of a, a core values impact for your, for your organization, but it also helps people want to come to work because not everybody's money motivated. You know, some people just want to be part of a great team and be part, part of a great environment. Um, of course, they all want to make money as well, so you have to treat them well financially. But yeah. um, when you get deeper into um, what people's needs and wants are um, at a deeper level, you start to create an atmosphere where people actually want to be part of something bigger. So... Um, that's, that's what I think coaching is versus just that, that dictatorship men, uh, management piece. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I love that. That's great. Yeah. So you, you said something there that, that I really noticed and wanted to talk about. Um, you talked about not everyone is, is, is there to collect a, a, a paycheck, right? Um, mm -hmm. people are, are driven by much more than just money. And, um, you know, where did that come? Like, how, where did you, you, you make that realization or that distinction and how has that really helped you in what you do? Yeah. I mean, I made that distinction over years of, of messing up. I, I was about to use the wrong word, but I'm not sure how, how the podcast is. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys use, uh, explicit, explicit yeah. words on this, <laughs> yeah. but I've made a bunch of mistakes in my life. Right. And, <laughs> and I think that, um, it, it comes from experience. It comes from thinking that I could buy my way out of, uh, of being a, a bad boss for, for many years and, you know, um, you know, bonus my way out of being um, present and being mindful of my people in my organization versus actually paying attention to them and, and, and paying attention to their needs and wants. And, um, you know, one prime example is one of my oldest and longest employees. In fact, the second, the second employee of my company who's still part of our team um, for a long time, I used to think that, you know, let's just give her a bonus and she's going to be happy, pat her on the back and, you know, see you in a quarter and we'll talk about it. But what I found through the years is, you know, one of her most, you know, favorite things in the world is me literally calling her and saying, what's up, rock star? What are you doing today? You know, what do you got going on and what can I help you with? And literally it's worth more than all the money in the world. Now I'm not saying that she doesn't get paid really well, but the fact is that that, that, you know, reaching out, touching base, checking in, 
you know, giving her the cool nicknames and stuff like that, that interaction is worth more to her than a financial bonus. And, you know, when you start to learn what people, what, what drives people, there are people that are driven by money. There are people that are driven by, you know, time off, or there are people that are driven, but there's some people that are driven by, you know, uh, you know, uh, getting their, their nails done or, or going to the spa or, you know, getting a half, a half a day to go hang out with their kids at, at, a, at, a, at, at their kids' functions or something like that. So sometimes it's those things that are really, you know, seem maybe, maybe silly or small to us, but they're hugely impactful to the employee and, um, or the, you know, we call them team members here, but, you know, employees to a lot of people, but, you know, our team taking care of them on an individual basis, what do they like, what, what their needs are, you know, I, I can give you thousands of examples, but, you know, one that we just did recently was I got a guy that's uh, big into guns and we bought him a, a membership at a gun range, you know, it was a couple hundred yeah. bucks for the year, but that's what he wanted. You know, right. I mean, and that was it's a huge thing for him. So yeah. really, really understanding what what their wants are and making them feel like you care about them on, on it. And we do not making them feel, but actually caring, I should say. Um, that's the difference between someone that's, you know, just being an owner and a manager of a, you know, driving, driving human resource versus, you know, coaching human beings to be, to be better. Yeah, I think that's really what when you talk about separating yourself, really becoming the championship leader um you know it's it, it's a big part of it right i mean there's there's many different um ways you can define a leader or characteristics of a great championship leader but uh, one of them definitely would be to really in a way which what i hear you saying is like just knowing your people and getting to know mm -hmm. them deep in a personal level and i know there's some that, that maybe say you shouldn't be super close or you shouldn't be friends with your lead, uh, with your, with your people. And I don't necessarily agree with that, uh, but it's like one way of leading. And, uh, but yeah, I'm all about like getting to know them and, and who they are and what's going on in their world. And, and then you're able to, to be able to do those things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's powerful. It's impactful. And um, I think, it just everybody just rises and, and feels more invested in you and your company and what you're going and the vision and where you're going uh, from that. So you were in the military, you said, I, I believe you said at the beginning, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was six years in the U.S. Navy Seabees. So uh, I was actually, I was a builder, a builder in the Navy. So a lot of people don't know what the Seabees are. It's a pretty small subset. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I stayed on land. I flew, I flew everywhere by air and uh, never saw any boats. <laughs> uh, that's, but, how did you like that we, oh that's one of my favorite favorite parts of my life man it was it was a, it was a lot of fun um i enjoyed it i've always been in construction my whole life i grew up in a construction okay. family my dad owned a, a drywall company and which turned into a general contracting and building company um later on in my life and um so i always knew i i kind of had that skill set but i always had that kind of calling to to serve my country and i knew i wanted to get into the military and uh, I just kind of lucked out because towards the, my later teen years, my dad ended up getting a, a retired senior chief um, to become one of, uh, to head up his general contracting. Uh, he was a foreman in his general contracting company. Okay. And um, so I had some experience with, uh, with a senior chief in the CBs. And, uh, you know, he kind of told me about it and what it was all about. And, I, and by the time I was out of uh, high school, I was like, man, I'm in, man. That's what I want to go do. Um, and it was tough to get in. It was tough because it's a very small niche. Um, but, uh, but I made my way in there and, and, I, and I got my foot in the door and, um, uh, I had, a, I had a really fun career. I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun. I worked my ass off and, um, I had a good time there and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, we talk a lot with the guests that come through is like, who are some, some, you know, one or two or three of the people that have really, um, helped you to get where you are today or to help you to become who you are to, to become that championship level leader. And I, I think I just heard you talking about one, right? Where yeah, because of this guy that came into your life, that came into your dad's company, um, mm -hmm. you know, it really kind of, it, it, it created the path for you or helped you to see a path for yourself. And uh, so, yeah, talk to me maybe about one or two people that have really impacted you and that you've learned from and that it helped to, to mold you to the leader that you are today. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, and he was 100% one of them. I mean, yeah. He, 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 he put me on that path to, uh, to the military, which I, you know, I believe, you know, created a lot of self discipline and a lot of, uh, you know, kind of the, uh, the, the way that I, I created my routine and my systems and, and the way I practiced in my business. But 
Um, you know, so that, that was really the track that led me into where I was today. But, um, you know, the next big impact in my life was, uh, was my, my friend and mentor, uh, Mark Evans. Um, and, uh, you know, I was, you know, my background is real estate and real estate flipping and development and uh, brokerage and, and all those things. So I kind of came across Mark actually through Facebook. Ironically, everybody meets everybody on social media nowadays. Right. right. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, still to this day, I mean, I've met Mark, uh, going back almost, uh, five or six years now at this point. And, um, to this day, he's, uh, literally, you know, one of my, one of my good friends and, uh, still my mentor and, uh, I'm in his mastermind group and he's actually, you know, um, inspired me to go out and create my own events, create my own mastermind group. And, um, I just left, uh, Ohio yesterday or what's today, today's Friday, uh, Wednesday night. Uh, we had a birthday party, his 41st, uh, 41st birthday party and, uh, inspires me on so many levels, not just business and personal and the way he carries himself and lifestyle, but the generosity piece. Um, we, we literally, um, the DM family is what he calls his mastermind group. Um, during his birthday party on Wednesday night, we raised over $150,000 for a charity um, in Haiti, which is going to take care of, you know, um, Haitian children that need relief. Um, but in, in that one night, I mean, literally in under 30 minutes, uh, this, this, this team did 150 G's. Um, and it's just super impactful, super inspirational. So, I mean, he's inspired me to do so many things, inspired me to start my mastermind, inspired me to lead other people, inspired me to help, um, you know, uh, create opportunities for others and also inspired me to create my own uh, charity, which uh, we've created. It's called the Addison Quinn Foundation for um, for veterans. So, you know, it's, 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 it's helped me to decide, you know, I've always wanted to give back. I've always had that feeling, but now it's like, now we have our own charity. So um, he's inspired me on many, many, uh, many, many levels and, and got me in front of people who have also created that, that, that drives as well. So uh, he's definitely one of those guys. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, you know, there's people that come along our life and sometimes we don't real realize it until later on, but uh, it's awesome when you can realize it. Like, when you're in that relationship, just the impact that they're making on you and, and to see, you know, how that helps to um, lift you up as well as a leader. So what, uh, what, tell, tell, tell us more about what it is that you do. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. the Navy, I know you've mentioned real estate and flipping homes and, and now you're, yeah. you're also into the coaching space and kind of, yeah, just kind of paint that path for us and let us know what you're doing and, and how you're helping others and lifting others up. Uh, yeah. The Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I've been in the real estate space now for, I was started 12 years ago in, in my companies, um, got out of the military a little bit uh, before that, um, did some work in the government sector as a construction project manager. But uh, I always tell people, I, I worked in, the, in uh, Washington, D.C. for a few years, and then I met my wife, who uh, lives in New Jersey, or, you know, did live in New Jersey. She yeah. moved down to D.C. with me. Um, but I always say that her umbilical cord never really got cut and it doesn't stretch very <laughs> far. Yep. So, uh, so she moved down with me for about six months and within six months we were both back in New Jersey. So, um, <laughs> it's been fun. It's been a fun ride, but, uh, I've worked in DC for a few years. And then when I got back to New Jersey, um, I just had a passion for getting into real estate. I've always wanted to flip houses and, you know, I, I read and invested in tons of seminars and books while I was in the military. So I always kind of knew I would get into it. Um, so I kind of went straight away into, um, I worked for my dad a little bit and did the general contracting thing, but in, in the same time I was flipping houses on the side, I was learning, I was growing, I was doing it by hand and kind of building, uh, the business. And then I started selling real estate and kind of being the jack of, jack of all trades, master of none and, and, uh, and, and learning and growing. And, um, you know, I kind of, kind of started to build that thing up until I, I, I was found myself working a hundred hours a week. And uh, making really good money and, and you know, to, to a lot of people, you know, being successful, whatever, you know, whatever that definition is, you know, I had the money, I had the, the ability, I had the drive, I was working all, all kinds of hours. And, you know, uh, at that point, when we started having kids, and I had a family and trying to settle down. Um, I was that definition of the guy who was like, always, always going nonstop, never home for dinner, you know, barely coming home to tuck the kids in bed. And like, I got to a point where I was like, man, I got to figure something out. And that was at the point where I was just getting involved in the masterminds with Mark and uh, just starting to start to get around proximity of other people who were successful and had grown businesses and started to, you know, learn to build teams and all that type of thing. And I was an island at that point. Like I was the guy that did everything, you know, and I, I didn't want to rely on anybody else. I had one assistant at that point. Um, but when I first hired my mentor, you know, we had this deep discussion and I was like, dude, I can't, can't keep doing this. Like, you know, like I'm, financially, I feel like I'm doing well, but I never have any money. 
you know, time wise and never have any time, you know, like I, I, everyone tells me I'm successful, but I don't feel like it, you know, and, 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 you know, I I was just living this like double life. I was being a realtor in the morning. I was throwing jeans on in the afternoon. I was flipping houses in the afternoon. Like I, I was a mile a minute, you know, and, um, I had to make a change. And that big, that big kind of aha moment for me was like, like, man, you got to start letting go of the vine. You have to start allowing your team to take responsibility. You have to start, you know, giving people responsibility and expecting things to get done. You have to start trusting people that they're going to actually, you know, do things and, and uh, you know, allow that team to take over. And that was the big turning point for me. It was, it was getting in, in not only just getting invested, invested into a mastermind and being around people that had done it, but then actually starting to build my own team and, and have my own success. And um, that was the big impactful moment that changed things for me. And uh, at, at that point, you know, we, at this level now, I own um, nine different companies. I own, uh, you know, we have a flip company, we have a brokerage company, we have a wholesale company, a media company, a you know, buy and hold company. So we have you know, a bunch of different stuff working and, and I spend most of my time now on the training space, the events and uh, in the mastermind group. And uh, I do that because of what I learned in, in that process and, and what it did for me, um, because I know what it can do for a lot of people who are in that same predicament that I was in, you know, six, seven years ago when, when I was running around like a chicken with my head coming all cut off and, uh, you know, just trying to, to trying to uh, keep up with the Joneses, you know? Yeah. I, and, um, you know, it says a lot about you as a person, as a leader too, to kind of get to that point in your life, you're pushing, you're grinding, you're building, right? You're, and, and for many, it can be like, man, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do, especially as a man. It's like to yeah. provide and, and, but to have the realization that, well, hang on a second, like if I continue down this path or what, number one, like, what is this all really for? And then you're like, I got a wife and a family at home, like, hang on a second, yeah. some priorities here. And too many don't make that realization or they wait till the, till it's way too late. Um, yeah. and, and then for you to just be able to see, all right, there's gotta be a shift here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and maybe that's when you, you went and said, Hey, I got to find someone to help me, guide me, coach me, mentor me, um, to find a different way, a different path. Cause I know for me, you know, I'm a coach and, mm-hmm. you know, high paid coach and, and we run some great programs, partner with Satema Gali and, uh, mm-hmm. very successful, but at the same time, like it took me being in a similar place, probably not the very exact same place as you, but a very similar place. And, and uh, to invest in myself, to get coaches, to get mentors, mm-hmm. to 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 find out what I didn't know, so that I can mm-hmm. get on that path and, and and correct it to you know the life that I'm living now. So was that yeah. kind of similar for you, or? Yeah, man. You know, it's funny because I, I I'd always I always thought I was investing in myself. Like I was that guy. I bought every seminar. I bought every online yeah. training. I bought all the courses. I bought all the things. But I never invested in a coach. I never invested in a mentor. I never invested in a person I could speak to. Right. Uh-huh. So yeah. I thought I thought I could self educate. I thought I could self self develop. I thought I could watch enough trainings that I would just get it. And right. then inevitably, I finally got on the phone with Mark. And he was like, dude, it's five grand, fly out and meet me for two days. And I was like, five grand, holy crap, for two days? Like, what yeah. am I going to get out of that for two days? And he was like, <laughs> yeah. well, I'm going to solve blah, blah, blah problem. I don't even know what it was at the time. And I'm like, hold on, you're going to, you'll solve that for me in two days? And he's like, yeah, dude, get on the plane. I'm like, all right, I'm in, like, here's my money and take it. Yeah. And, and, and I just kind of like, you know, you know, when you get, like, I, I go off my gut a lot, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's, it's, it's served me well so far. And yep. when, when I was on the phone with him, I just had this gut, this gut instinct that like, okay, I, I, I trust this dude. I got, I got to see what it's all about. And, and there, there's no, there's been no turning back since, you know, I knew when, when I went out there, it was Columbus and, and, you know, six years ago now. And, um, you know, I flew out there the first time I hit that room, I knew I was in the right place because the people I call it proximity, but you know, the people that you're around, you start getting, I, I want to be the dumbest guy in the room, you know, up until that point, yeah, absolutely. you know, I was the most self-educated dude I knew. Like I had read everything. I knew <laughs> everything. And then I got into that room and I was like, Oh my God, these guys are like actually kicking ass. They're like, they're, you know, they're actually doing things I've never even heard about. Like I didn't even know you could do half the things that that's going on in this room. And then, then I realized like, I need to be in this room more often. How do I get in this room? And, and yeah. that's what the, that's, that's the blossoming of the mastermind because 
that room happens all over the country all the time. And people don't even realize that this stuff is going on half the time and because we're, we're in our own little bubble, you know, especially right. when you're working a hundred hours a week, you're not even picking your head up to breathe, yeah, let alone work on yourself, you know? And, and, and that's why I'm so passionate about it because I, again, I know what it did to change me. I'm sure you're, you, you feel the same way. Like, like when you can take your head up to breathe and actually work on yourself, 90% of your problems are, are between your ears. You know, they're, they're yeah. not business related. They're not yeah. cash flow related. They're not, they're not lead gen related. They're not marketing related. They're not team related. They're, they're, they're leadership related. And that's, that starts with you. Right. So yeah. you know, when you start to work on a high level, work on that stuff, all the rest of it starts to fall into play, but we don't take the time to invest in ourselves, but, you know, we'll invest, you know, in getting a new kitchen or, or landscaping yeah. our yards or <laughs> getting us some freaking car that we can't afford or, right. you know, we'll invest in dumb, or, you know, a vacation that's, that's probably unnecessary. We'll invest in a lot of dumb shit, but we won't invest the money to make ourselves truly better, you know. Um, and until that time, I was spending probably easily that much money just on seminars and crap like that, but never really on a person. And yeah. investing in that coach, investing in that mentor was, that was the game changer for me. That, that was the, what really moved the needle. Um, and that's what I found most impactful. Yeah. I, same exact experience for me. Absolutely. And uh, it's one thing to have a bunch of information, which normally, right. If we're being really honest, most of it sits on the shelf or we, we might listen mm -hmm. to it. But we're really doing about it. Yeah. Yep. You're actually getting in a room, spending a lot of money, like to be invested, mm -hmm. really be invested in. All right. Like, it's on the line. Like, I yeah, gotta, I gotta, I gotta live this. I gotta implement it. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk real quick. All of us have moments in our life, right? Where, you know, there's a real turning point. There's a, and, and probably multiple ones, but is there one for you where like, again, I always say the majority of the masses are going left. And for whatever mm -hmm. reason you decided to go right, you talked a little bit about listening to your gut and you mm -hmm. just, I think it's those moments where you really listen to your gut where everybody might say, Hey, are you sure? Like, what are you doing? You got this going on here. Like this is a safe place, safe path versus a championship leader. Like yeah. visionaries, they're the ones that can see the future before it happens. And it's, it's not the popular decision or the popular vision many times, um, mm -hmm. which had you not taken that path and, and gone the way everybody else was, you'd be in a very different place today. You'd probably not be doing what you're doing. Probably wouldn't be yeah. coaching, leading, impacting. Like, is there a moment that really sticks out to you? Yeah. I mean, there's really two moments. Um, yeah. Number one, I, I kind of call it like my Superman moment. Um, you know, back in, again, probably six, seven years ago, um, I, I, my primary businesses were my retail brokerage business and my fix and flip business. And, uh, the reason I called my Superman moment was I used to, I used to, I used to act like I used to tell people I was like, I, I was Superman. I used to wake up in the morning and put on a suit and tie, which by the way, nowadays, everybody knows me like it's a funeral or a wedding. If you see me in yeah. a suit and tie, like, I don't wear that stuff anymore. And, and I was a real estate agent. I was a full-time broker. I mean, I would get up in the morning, I would prospect, I would talk to listings. I would talk to expired listings. I would bring buyers on appointments. Like I was a realtor. And then, of course, I had all these fix and flips going on in the afternoon. And so I would, I would run home. I'd grab lunch. I would take all that stuff off. I'd throw a T-shirt and jeans on. I'd jump in my car and run out to the projects. I had a checkbook in my pocket. I had to hit Home Depot, pick out paint colors, get tile selection, schedule the projects, you know, make sure everything was on track. And, and I was burning both ends of the candle, you know, and eventually yep. something had to give. And again, you know, again, I, I, this, this – this is probably it's relational to a lot of things that a lot of people are going through because to all accounts, I was successful. I was making money. I felt, you know, like, like this, this must be the definition of success. This must be what everyone was talking about all these years. Right. Yeah. But, but again, I never felt like I had money because every dollar I had was gone. It was coming. Yeah. It came in as fast as it went yeah. and I never had time. And one of the biggest challenges for me was I never felt like I was living my own unique self being my own unique self. Like I would go on a listing appointment and I didn't want my, my, my realtor clients to know I was fixing and flipping for some strange reason. I didn't, I wasn't lying about it, but I wasn't yeah. telling them about it. Right. And then I, I would go on the job site and I, I never wanted to see that them see me in a suit and tie because you never want the, the construction workers to be yeah, like, yeah. Oh, this, this guy's in a suit, you know? So yeah. I just got to this point where I'm like, dude, I can't do this anymore. Like, this isn't me. I look in the mirror. I don't even know who the hell I am in the morning. I'm in a suit in the afternoon. I'm in a t-shirt. And this went on for a couple of years. 
And that was the big aha moment that like, how's it going to, it's going to break. It's got to break at some point. I got to, I got to give. And so at that point I was literally going to sell the Remax or, or, or shut it down, just get out of the retail game. And I had this discussion with my mentor and he said, look, if you're going to sell it and your, your assistant has a license, why wouldn't you just give her the business, give her the clients, give her everything. The worst case scenario a year from now, she fucks up and it burns it to the ground. You either yeah. sell it or, or I mean, you either shut it down and make zero or a year from now she makes money. And the, the irony is, and I was like, great, that's a great idea. Great idea. And the irony is a year later, she made more money than we did as a team. Wow. And I flipped twice as many houses as I did the year before because I was 100% focused. She yeah. was 100% focused. Yeah. We, created a, we created a split system. So she was making her same salary plus some commission because she wasn't making commission before. Yeah. And everyone was happy, but it, it forced me to let go of the vine. It forced me to give my clients to someone and trust her to go take care of them. And it turns out she took care of them better than I did because she was incentivized. Not that I didn't take great care of my clients, but she was yeah. incentivized because she was like, Oh, these are Joe's clients. Like I have to baby them because I don't want him to be mad at me, you know? So not only are they good clients, but I have to make sure I take care. So that letting go of the vine was like, wow, we made more money the next year. And I can trust her to take care of my clients. Well, I'm, we might be onto something. Maybe this whole team thing is, then we started hiring people. Then we started growing. And we went from two, two employees to 37 employees in, in three years. Now, we grew too fast. I learned yeah. a lot of things the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. I, I've probably hired 50, 50 people to get back down to 25. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that's how you learn and grow. And, and seven years ago, I had one, right? So um, it's the only way to get through you know, the, 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 the curve. That was the big determining moment for me. And then the, and then the second big one, well, obviously, was that first time I went to one big mastermind where it was like the light bulb, like, this is where I got to be. This is where I know I'm going to start to create impact in my own life. And you guys are going to hold me accountable because nobody back home's hold me accountable. My mom doesn't even know what I do. You know, <laughs> yeah. everyone else thinks I'm, thinks I'm crazy being this, this entrepreneur buying 60 houses a year and trying to resell. Right. And like, no, nobody, nobody realizes what it is I'm trying to accomplish. But in this room, when I, when I buy 60 houses, you guys ask me why I didn't buy 80, you know, yeah. that's what yeah. this room does, you know? Yeah. So I knew it was, a, it was going to be a different level. I put myself into and I knew that the impact was going to be different. Um, so that was the second game changer. So those are the two big moments for me in the last uh, couple of years and, and really is what brought me to this moment, which is where I get to give that gift back to other people. And uh, that's why I love what I do so much right now. Well, that's huge. Um, those are two huge moments and, and two incredible lessons that taken from both of those. Like, yeah, every time in my business or in our business, um, in, in others that I've, that I've coached, similar to you right they're like oh, i really should do this or make this move or make that jump and and i think the natural tendency is like oh you shouldn't do that but then when you do it it's just it's just yeah. almost every time it's like man it's just goes vertical fast because yeah not out of the way right and you allow others to come in and help you and and uh the, the trajectory is, is is amazing because of those decisions but they are, they're, they're difficult ones to make so i just love that love that example. Mm -hmm for yourself um as we wrap this up let's uh leave leave the listeners here again you know entrepreneurs business owners men and women that want to grow and just get a little bit better and and again you know talk go back to you know back in our day before we really invested in coaching and mentors was getting information listening to people that are where we want to be and uh, that's the whole reason I really put this this podcast together. So yeah, leave the listeners with one or two things that uh, would really serve them or benefit them uh, as we wrap this up. Yeah, I mean the best advice I can give anybody, and I, it, look, it could be it could be you, Nate. It could be me. It could be anybody. I would mean, find somebody that can mentor or coach you because a great mentor is going that what they do best is convince you that you're better than what you think you are. That's what a great mentor does. Yeah. They convince you to do things that you don't think you're capable of. And they push you to do things that you don't think you're capable of. And when you get to the other side of it and you look back and you're like, holy crap, I never knew I could do what I just did. And then you go to your mentor and you're like, did you know I could do that? I, I knew it all along. That's yeah, why you're right. here, right? There's yeah. nothing better in my opinion, than having that mentor on your side that's, that's getting you across that, that great divide. 
And so if you're listening to this, which I know the reason you're listening to it is because you believe in, in great leadership and you believe in leveling up, you should have a mentor. If you're on this podcast, there's no reason you shouldn't have that, that person in your life. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. And uh, lastly, how, how can the listeners find more about you? And uh, of course, we'll add this into the show notes and all of that as well. And we'll get this out to you so you can share it with, with your audience as well. But yeah, what are some ways that people can get a hold of you, find out about your mastermind, your, your coaching? Yeah. Your yeah, it's simple. All the information is uh, right on my website. It's joeevangelisti.com, uh, which I'm sure you'll spell that for them on the, uh, on the show notes. Absolutely. And then, uh, and then they can also look me up on Facebook. I'm, I'm pretty active on Facebook as well so i always get back to people if you message me there um i'll, I'll make sure I, I send back a note for you all right joe i really really appreciate you being here and taking time out of your busy busy life uh so thank you so much absolutely brother thanks for having me you bet